Okay, video number three for today. Hopefully this will be the last one. So what I have on the uh, board for you right now are trig identities. Okay, trig identities help us be able to solve problems with trig functions. We use trig identities a lot. You'll see that there are a lot of them listed here. And in the beginning, it can be a little bit overwhelming uh, to think, oh, I have to know all of those. And eventually, you will need to know all of these. Um, so, but I think that you're going to use them enough over the next couple of weeks that you will know them without really having to sit down and think about memorizing them. Okay, so they're broken up into four categories. We'll start over here with the even odd identities. So this has to do with whether or not functions are what we consider even or odd, which has to do a little bit with their symmetry. So what we'll notice is that the cosine of a negative angle is the same as just the cosine of a positive angle. Or for instance, the cosine of 30 degrees is the same as the cosine of negative 30 degrees. Okay, And then the same goes for secant. What you'll notice about all four of the other trig functions, these are what we call odd functions. And because they are odd functions, the sine of negative um, some angle is equal to the negative sine of an angle. So for instance, this would be like saying the sine of negative 60 is the same as the negative sine of 60 degrees. So it's nice if you don't have to think about well, where is negative 60 degrees on the unit circle if you can use an even odd property to show, oh wait, the sine of negative 60 is really just the sine of 60 and I make it negative. Okay, so then you're dealing with an angle that's in quadrant one. So that's the even odd properties. The quotient property should be fairly evident to you um, if we have tangent equals sine over cosine. Remember in the unit circle we defined tangent as y over x and y was sine and x was cosine. So it makes sense that tangent then is also sine over cosine and then of course we have cotangent which would be cosine over sine or x over y. We have our reciprocal identities. Again, these are ones that you should be aware of already, I think, um, simply because we know that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of one another. So therefore, the sine is equal to 1 over the cosecant, and cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, the reciprocal of sine. The cosine is equal to the reciprocal of secant, and secant is equal to the reciprocal of cosine, and so forth. And then the last three that we have down here are Pythagorean identities, so they have to do with um, the Pythagorean theorem, and if we were to think about these uh, values in a unit, or a, sorry, in a right triangle with a hypotenuse of one, again, we would have maybe y squared plus x squared equals one, or leg squared plus another leg squared is equal to one. And then uh, the other identities, the one plus tangent squared is secant squared, and the one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared come also from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, once in a while, actually quite often, we see these written in different forms. Okay, So you can manipulate those equations to say different things. For instance, if I just look at the first one, and I'm just going to give you a quick example, if I were to just subtract sine squared on both sides, I would end up with another identity that looks like this. Cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. And sometimes, the identities in these forms can be really useful to us. Uh, sometimes we might see something like here, if I subtract tangent squared from both sides, I would see that 1 is equal to secant squared minus tangent squared. And again, sometimes those are just really useful identities for us when we're solving problems. So you can also manipulate these in different ways in order to use them for what we need them for. Okay. So this is um, all of the identities. Again, good time to pause the video and make sure you have them all written down because I'm going to erase and we're going to look at a couple of example problems where we're going to use these identities to help us solve problems. Okay. So our first problem looks like this. Um, we know that the sine of t is two-thirds, and we know that the cosine of t is, this 
square root of 5 over 3. And our task is to find the value of the remaining trig functions. Okay. So we need to find tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter where you start, so I'm going to start with cosecant. I'm starting with cosecant because it seems to be the easiest one to deal with at the time. Um, because I know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. If sine is two-thirds, the cosecant is the reciprocal of that or three-halves. So that one's done. Um, I could then, knowing cosine, I could find secant, right? Because we know that the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Well, if I turn this over, interesting things happen. I get a radical on the bottom, which I don't like, so I have to rationalize that to get 3 square roots of 5 over 5. Okay. Now, to find tangent, we're going to use one of those quotient properties that says that tangent is sine divided by cosine. So that's going to be 2 thirds divided by the square root of 5 over 3. But that's the same as 2 thirds times 3 over the square root of 5. Well, the 3's cancel. I get 2 over the square root of 5. But then I need to rationalize. So I'll multiply by square root of 5 over square root of 5 and be left with 2 square roots of 5 over 5 for tangent. So we have one more that we need to find. We were given two. We found three more. There are six total, so we need cotangent. Now, I can use another quotient identity here, or I can also use the reciprocal identity that says that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Now, be careful when you look at this because if I go all the way over here and I say, well, here's tangent, I just need to turn it over, now I'm going to have a radical on the bottom, and I have to rationalize, and it's kind of a pain. But if I just go back one step, remember that we said that this was also tangent, right? We just didn't like the way it looked, so we rationalized it. But if this is tangent, the cotangent is simply going to be the reciprocal of that, or the square root of 5 over 2. And so we've used the uh, trig identities to help us find all six trig functions. So you're going to be looking at a few problems like that today on your assignment. Again, I'm going to erase. If you need time, you can pause the video and write it down. Um, the last example we're going to do, I'm going to say given that the sine of an angle is, let's use uh, three-fifths, use... A Pythagorean identity to find cosine of t. Well, here's what I know. The Pythagorean identity that relates sine and cosine says that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Well, um, keep in mind this notation, I didn't mention this earlier, sine squared of t is the same thing as saying the sine of t squared, like this, but you have to have the parentheses. If you say sine of t squared, that's something different. That's taking an angle, squaring it, and then finding the sine, okay? This means finding the sine of an angle and then squaring that value. So that's what I want to consider. I know the sine of t, it's 3 fifths, so this is going to be 3 fifths squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. When I square this, I get 9 twenty fifths plus cosine squared equals 1. I'll subtract 9 twenty fifths from both sides, so I'll have 25 twenty fifths minus 9 twenty fifths, which is 16 twenty fifths. And then the last thing I'll do is square root both sides. So we find out that the cosine of t is the square root of 16, or 4, over the square root of 25, which is 5.
So we've used that Pythagorean identity to help us find the value of cosine. Okay. All right, your assignment I'm going to post right below this video so you can get started on that. Um, good luck. See you next week.